Hey, um, what are you doing? Um, I'm trying to move my home lab to the cloud. You, uh, what? Yeah, man, everything's hosted in the cloud, so I figured, <laughs> why not? No, yeah, I get that, but that's not how you... Good luck. Thanks. I'm gonna use like a catapult or something. That's how the Greeks did it. Okay, so I didn't really move my entire home lab to the cloud, but that doesn't mean that it's not possible. This video is sponsored by American Cloud, a newcomer to the cloud hosting game that brings affordable hosting with an easy to use interface to the masses. Yes, this is a sponsored video, but I chose to partner with American Cloud as I actually really like their product, as you'll see in this video. So why? Why would someone decide to host their home lab in the cloud? Well, a big reason is physical restrictions, whether it's because your wife has threatened to leave you if she sees one more server in the house, or because you live life on the road and it's not feasible to do yourself, both valid reasons. Also, it could just be out of convenience. Not everyone is into the hardware aspect of home labbing and would rather just have a remote lab. I know, right? Mind blowing that other people can enjoy things differently. Honestly, pretty disgusting TBH. Another is that, well, you don't have to have your entire home lab in the cloud. Having specific services running in the cloud as a backup is a perfectly reasonable use case in the event that you want redundancy on some of your self-hosted services. I understand that some people just stay away from cloud hosting in general. I get that. The three most common concerns of cloud hosting are price, security, and ease of use. Don't worry, we're gonna cover all that throughout the video. The biggest one in terms of cost that shocked me though was that American Cloud doesn't have any egress fees. That's wild. Push and pull all the data you want with no extra charge. Go ahead and look at other providers and peep those egress fees. It's brutal. Now for me personally, I have the space and actually enjoy messing with the hardware, so I fall into the category of needing cloud backups for some of my services. Let's dive into the American Cloud product and I'll show you how I'm using it and what they bring to the table. The first thing I noticed about American Cloud is their UI, which is clean and to the point, exactly what I've wanted and addresses our ease of use concern. I've used AWS on and off a few years and while it's extremely feature rich, it's very easy to get lost in there and I swear this is a true story. I actually had to get a tech in the chat once because I couldn't find out where I had a service running that was charging me like $3 a month. With American Cloud, it's super easy to see what you're running and what you're being charged for. One big thing I wanted to have in the cloud was a backup slash testing Kubernetes cluster. It honestly took me about two minutes to get set up with a three node cluster in here. Just select the version, location you want to host from, and the tier of resources you want. I went with the lowest tier, which gives you two cores, two gigabytes of RAM, and 100 gigabytes of storage for $21. Then I upped that to three nodes, which would be $63 total. Math. This isn't an insignificant amount of money, but it's very aggressively priced compared to other providers. Let me be 100% honest with you guys. I know what you're all thinking when you watch this video, because it's the same thing I'd be thinking. Brett, for that amount of money, I could just buy my own machine and do it myself. Yes, 100% true. I'm not denying that, and if that's your jam, awesome. There are a lot of individuals and businesses that would gladly pay a bit more for the convenience and security of hosting in the cloud. Once your cluster is up and running, there are some tips at the bottom for getting set up with cube controls so you can access your cluster locally. It's a pretty easy process if you're familiar with working with Kubernetes. You can actually download the entire cube config file at the top and paste that directly into your cube directory on your local machine and boom, you're controlling your cloud cluster from the comfort of your own basement. I tested this out by deploying my static site and it worked perfectly after I followed their documentation for how to set up Ingress. To be fair, the documentation was great. I'm just an idiot and skipped like a step or six. Once it was up and running though, I could simply open the ports I need and forward them using the UI and bada bing, bada boom, we're hosting our website in our cloud hosted Kubernetes cluster. My goal is to use this cluster to test upgrades and deployments before pushing them to my production cluster. Super awesome, cause if I break something, takes maybe like a minute to rebuild the entire cluster and start over again. 
Neat. Okay, maybe you're not a Kubernetes guy and don't need three notes. Maybe you just want a simple little VM to mess around with. Possibly run Docker, maybe a WordPress site, maybe just good old Debian. Luckily, it's really easy to get up and running. Under the Cloud Compute tab, you'll see a similar interface as before. Pick the location to host in, networking type, and what kind of VM you want. As of right now, you can choose between a few different Linux distros, and if you want to make it even easier, you can launch your VM with some apps already installed. I took advantage of this with their Docker option, and again, in about one minute, I had a Docker instance up and running. When you select your resources, there are two things that I really liked. One is that you can customize your machine and be given a price based on the exact specs. Maybe you want something with fewer cores, but more RAM and maybe less storage. Go for it. The other is that you can be billed hourly for your machine. So if you want to spin up something real quick to mess around on for a day or so, then you can do that without worrying about paying for an entire month. And just as expected, you can navigate to your VM directly in the browser or SSH in, assuming you selected an externally facing network. With a two core CPU, two gigabytes of RAM, 100 gigabytes of storage VM, you're looking at about $43 per month, which is honestly cheaper than any of the major ball players in the cloud hosting space. And the best part is that there's no egress fees. I mean, look at this comparison to other providers. If you're a business deploying a large operation, then you could be saving thousands. Now you probably noticed that I have two VM instances running and that's because I'm taking advantage of their load balancer feature. You have the ability to set up a load balancer that can route your traffic between multiple instances that you have running in a few different methods like round robin and lease connections. I spun up a super cool website on both of my instances and you can see that if I access the load balancing IP from different devices, I'm getting different versions of the site basically showing that the traffic is being routed between the VMs. This is cool if you wanna leverage different VMs you have running to host the same service without eating up all the resources on a single one. If you're exposing something to the outside world, you'll wanna know that what you're running in the cloud is secure. Hell, even if you're not exposing it, you'll want it to be secure. I told the folks at American Cloud that you guys would want to be confident that the things you host on here are safe. They assured me that the platform adheres to industry-defined security standards from the CIS, CISA, and NIST. They also employ an array of strategies including asset configuration, data protection, vulnerability management, and incident response. I know that sounds like a ton of buzzwords, but without getting extremely technical, there's no real way for me to convey this. All right, let's move on to storage. Here we have two options to choose from, object storage and block storage. To simplify it, object storage is an S3 storage that is available inside or outside of your cloud provider via any S3 client. A lot of storage services have S3 clients built in, or you can download one like MSP360, formerly CloudBerry, and access it from your desktop. On the other side, we have the block storage, which you can mount directly to your VMs. In terms of pricing, again, it's extremely competitive. Check this out, for one terabyte of data, you'll pay $20 per month with American Cloud and $23 per month with AWS. Oh boy, $3 a month, real impressive. Aha, it's not the impressive part. Remember, American Cloud has no egress fees, so now let's assume you'll be moving out about 500 gigabytes per month. The price stays at $20 with American Cloud, but shoots up to $68 in AWS. That's more than triple the price. Imagine if you scale that up to multiple terabytes and way more egress, actually insane. Another feature of the storage is the ability to take snapshots. So in the event you're like me and mess shit up constantly, then you can just roll it back with your snapshots. So that's most of the meat and potatoes when it comes to the American Cloud platform. If you need support with anything, you'll be happy to know that they have a dedicated in-house support team. So no getting the runaround and waiting for support tickets to be passed down to a third party support squad. Again, I want to stress that these guys are new to the hosting game. You may not find all the bells and whistles that you'll find elsewhere, but honestly, that's what I liked about the platform. Straightforward cloud hosting with extremely competitive pricing. I highly encourage you guys to give them a try and use my referral link right here. Um, it's a really cool referral link. Check it out. And pretty sure you'll be happy with the experience. Also, use the comments below to let me as well as the American Cloud team know what you think or what can be improved. 
I've talked with the team over there quite a bit and they are extremely eager to learn from you guys and improve their product. But that's all I have to say about that. If you like this, then drop a like. If you wanna see more content like this, then please consider subscribing. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my cloud provided support squad. You're basically like angels, but you're alive. I, I hope you're alive. That'd be kind of morbid, but yeah, you guys are awesome. And if you're still around, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.